The Irish Kinahan Cartel is one of the most ruthless and powerful criminal organizations in the world. They're known for their violence, their drug trafficking, and their connections to some of the most powerful people in Ireland. What drives these men to commit such horrific acts? And why is the US government suddenly involved in taking action against them? Do you want to know more? Keep watching to find out. Welcome back to Darkness Unraveled. Let's dig into the video. The Kinahan Cartel was founded in the 1990s by Christy Kinahan Sr. Christy has had his fair share of criminal activities way before the cartel even existed. So when his drug dealing network in Dublin came to light, the police weren't surprised at all. However, during that time, he wasn't known outside of the local police station. Now on the contrary, he is globally recognized as the leader of a criminal organization equal to the Camorra Mafia of Italy and the dreaded Los Zetas of Mexico. So how did the Kinahan cartel become one of the world's largest and most powerful criminal organizations? Let's start at the beginning. Christy Kinahan wasn't brought up to be a criminal. He made that decision for himself. He was a clever and charming boy and had several opportunities in his life. He was raised in a middle-class family and attended one of Ireland's top schools. Despite this, a life of crime was the one he chose. His history of arrests for burglary, theft, forgeries and other property offenses date back to the 1970s, but he didn't start his drug dealing business until the late 1990s. While Kinahan and his old friend Thomas Cavanaugh were operating and dealing in Dublin's inner city, he had bigger plans. While doing time in prison for drug-related offenses in the late 1990s, he learned Spanish and Dutch, which he subsequently put to use in expanding his business to other countries. According to U.S. State Department investigators, he built the company into an empire by importing from South America and trafficking into Ireland, the UK, and Europe. His primary products were heroin and cocaine. You may wonder, were there others who helped Christie with expanding his drug empire? The answer is yes. Christie Sr. has two sons, Daniel and Christie Jr., who run the multi-billion dollar drug trafficking empire from the coca fields of South America to the slums of Ireland and the UK and from the beaches of Spain to the glistening souks of Dubai. Furthermore, the Kinahans also have had several associates that supported them and who have also been involved in drug smuggling, gun running and murders over the course of three decades. Both sons, Daniel and Christy Jr., were trained for their roles in the family company. The gang's finances are being monitored and managed by Christy Jr., who is reportedly based in Dubai. In 2018, the Dublin High Court accused Daniel of being the man in charge of the operation's day-to-day -day activities, such as drug smuggling, gun smuggling, and money laundering. Daniel claims to have no ties to organized crime and is a boxing promoter who has worked with fighters like Tyson Fury. Christy Sr. had run-ins with the law in the past, which resulted in him spending time behind bars in Belgium and the Netherlands. However, aside from an incident involving one of his associates and the Irish National Liberation Army, the gang could operate with a lot of freedom, even when some of their actions would have harmful consequences. And although they were known for their violence and drug trafficking, there was also another side to the Kinahan cartel, their philanthropy. The cartel has donated millions of euros to charities, hospitals, and schools in Ireland. They've even set up a foundation to help youth at risk. For some, this is ironic, and for others, this softens the blow. Even though the Irish Gardai had trouble keeping up with the cartel's international activities, this all changed when Gary Hutch, a member of the opposing Hutch gang and the nephew of leader Jerry, was murdered in his house on Spain's Costa del Sol in September 2015. Gary allegedly worked with Daniel Kinahan, and everything was well until they had a fallout over a plot involving a tiger kidnapping. In this scenario, someone is abducted, and instead of demanding money, this person is used as leverage to coerce another person into committing a crime on their behalf. Many people started believing the false rumor that Gary was a spy for the Spanish police. There was a monetary exchange, and one of Jerry's associates allegedly consented to take a bullet to the leg as payment in blood for the treason. But in the end, all of that was irrelevant, as hitman James Quinn, who was later convicted of murder, shot Gary to death. After Gary's murder, the Kinahans engaged in a bloody feud with the Hutch Gang, led by Jerry Hutch. Over the next three years, at least 18 individuals were slain in what became known as the Hutch-Kinahan feud, with the majority of deaths occurring as a result of gunfire. 
Most of the Hutch gang were dead or buried by the time it ended. This includes two innocent bystanders due to mistakes in the victim identification. At the height of the conflict in February 2016, armed individuals disguised themselves as members of the riot police and attacked the lobby of the Regency Hotel in Dublin and started the fire. Although the assailants narrowly missed Daniel Kinahan, they were successful in taking the life of his associate, David Byrne. For years, the Irish police have tried to track down the Kinahans with little success. Only recently have they been joined in their efforts by law enforcement in the UK, the United States, and other European Union member states. Due to the cartel's connection with South America and because things were getting out of hand, the National Crime Agency in the UK, the Agency for Law Enforcement Cooperation in the European Union, and the Department of State in the US were all asked for assistance in locating the organization. This led to the following. Thomas Cavanaugh was known as the Bomber, and two of his friends, Daniel Canning and Gary Vickery, were arrested in March this year and sent to prison on accusations of possessing firearms, engaging in the trafficking of narcotics, and engaging in money laundering. This was the first big setback for the cartel since Cavanaugh was the man in charge of the Kinahan cartel's operations in the UK up until earlier this year. Cavanaugh concealed 30 million pounds worth of cocaine and cannabis in industrial equipment and was therefore sentenced to 21 years in prison for his crime. When police investigated his bulletproof house in Tamworth, which is close to Birmingham, they also discovered a substantial sum of cash in addition to a significant number of weapons and a large quantity of cash. Because of his imprisonment, the United Kingdom branch of the Kinahan cartel was eventually unsuccessful. Following his arrest, the U.S. Department of the Treasury placed sanctions on seven other offenders, including Christy Kinahan, his sons Daniel and Christy Jr. They also put out a $5 million reward for information leading directly to the capture of Christy Sr. or his two sons. The second setback for the cartel happened a month ago. Johnny Morrissey, also known as Johnny Cash, has been arrested. He was another one of the seven offenders sanctioned by the U.S. and played a key role in money laundering for the cartel. Furthermore, the United Arab Emirates also froze all of Daniel Kinahan's assets, including both personal and business accounts. While the gang leaders may have eluded the authorities in the past, they would soon run out of money and would be unable to continue hiding. As we see, nobody is untouchable, and what comes next is inevitable when you see Ireland, the UK, and the US working together. The net is closing in, and it's just a matter of time when other members of the Kinahan cartel are getting arrested. As for Christie and his two sons, they are the ones who could perhaps escape the net if there is even a little gap. So viewers, it's a wrap. Do you guys think the Kinahan family will get caught? Let us know in the comments section below. We truly hope that you have a good time watching the video. Please subscribe to our channel so that you can watch more incredible videos. You can also check out our other videos that have been specially selected for you. We'll catch up in the next video.